Hi YouTube. This is Adrian and Bernard bringing you episode 12 which is titled The Coming Revolution The Problem of Money by H. Spencer Lewis 1965 and Bernard's gonna mm -hmm. give us this lecture on the monetary system a, pro a proposed idea on how to change it. Before I get into the coming revolution, the problem of money by A. Spencer Lewis, I'll read what I personally said. I was down at Wall Street. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. Bye. If you want to take the power out of the hands of the powerfully rich who control too much, you'll have to change the monetary system. The great problem that exists in our society has to do with our monetary system, and if not changed, our society will not change for the better. When the Wall Street demonstrators were down at Wall Street, I gave out close to a thousand copies of the monetary system, a much needed change. Adrian was down here a couple of times with me during the later part of that when they were downtown. The reason the people down at Wall Street will not get very far is because they're depending on the government to make a change. But what kind of change? They can demonstrate all they want, but if they do not know what it is that needs to be changed, the government will wait them out until they start fading away, which they have done. So please listen to this. And if one can think of something better than present it to the people, I am a concerned veteran who served as an infantryman during the Korean War, and I am appalled at the state of affairs that's going on in this country. The monetary system in much needed change is what I wrote. Here, here, what I believe should happen. One, that the 1% should not be allowed to influence our government as to the kind of monetary system the people should have. Two, stop the taxpayers' money from being sent overseas. Help other nations in need with technology, food, etc. Three, Take the making of our currency out of the hands of the Federal Reserve and make our own currency. Four, there should be a law passed stating that anyone taking their business out of the United States will lose their citizenship, their patents, and will not be allowed to take any equipment, machinery, etc. with them. Instead, it becomes the property of the United States government or the people. Five, Eventually, adopt a system of rewarding people for their services with a system, something like this that I'm going to re uh, speak of, called The Coming Revolution, by H. Spencer Lewis, like he said, 1965. Quote, it's strange how we always think of a revolution as something that starts suddenly, revolves quickly, and causes more destruction than construction. Perhaps this is because most of the popular revolutions in the past have been of that nature. We do not think of evolution as being rapid and destructive, and certainly a revolution should not be any different than a phase of evolution. The wheel of an automobile revolves, and it may revolve slowly or rapidly, and yet its revolving does not necessarily bring destruction or injury to anything. The earth is revolving and we certainly can speak of the revolutions of the earth as something good and peaceful. Science has passed through revolutions as well as evolutions, and so has art and music and many phases of civilization. But there is another revolution coming that is different from the ones we have had in the past and will be constructive as well as partially destructive inasmuch as it will eliminate many of the various things of life as well as create many new and beautiful things. One of the problems that face the future is the monetary system. Rosicrucians have understood for centuries that one of the evils of civilization is the arbitrary establishment of money in the form of paper and coin, which is used as a reward for, la for labor, services, and mental efficiency. We can all agree that the rapid development of machinery has enabled a few to control many features of the present economic and monetary systems. 
We do not say that machinery itself is responsible for these conditions, but we do say that the existence of machinery has enabled the wicked men of the world to do things they would not have done otherwise. Certainly, we would be wrong in calling natural or artificial gas a dangerous thing, condemning it or forbidding anyone to make or use it merely because some have used it for criminal purposes or to commit suicide. Gas can be used constructively as well as destructively. Therefore, it is neither an evil nor good nor good thing except in accordance with the manner in which it is used. The same is true of machinery. It can be used to solve many of our economic problems instead of to increase them. It has aided civilization by helping, helping everyone to live more comfortably and happily. It can be made to serve the same purpose in the future. The great problem is to find some way of rewarding man for his services. The use of money permits too much crime and places an artificial value on things. Money in and of itself should have no power, but it does. And when this power is in the hands of the wrong person, it becomes dangerous, as one can see. It is not in accordance with karmic law that man should be paid for his services, labor and devotion with something wholly artificial which he can use to injure others or himself. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Think of those who have not labored at all, but are living on the artificial rewards accumulated by their parents or forebears. With this unearned and undeserved power in their hands, they can live lives of idleness, while others who labor do so without proper reward. Money can be used to destroy friend and enemy. For this reason, Rosicrucians have long advocated that some other means of reward be found. <clears throat> if I venture a suggestion, it is this. A certificate based upon units of service should be substituted for money. As a basis for the system of measuring service, that of the farmer might be taken as the standard. Since his service represents the strength and power of man's life on earth, one day of his service could be called basic. Taking the farmer's average day and making it the standard unit, some form of script could be used whereby the services of every human being could be properly rewarded. The professional man might receive a script equal to three units of service, the clerk a unit and a half. Younger people or those contributing less important services might receive script equaling half of the service rendered by the farmer in one day. All of these scripts representing various units of service could be cashed at stores or exchanged for food and necessities, and even small fractions of a smaller unit might be used for exchange purposes. This script could not be given away, banked, nor saved for the future since it could be exchanged only for necessities and service by the person to whom it was issued. In this way, all would receive the necessities of life in exchange for the services they render. Those who labor in productive capacity would be assured of sufficient script to reward them adequately, that no bank failures and fluctuations of stock markets or gold standards could affect it. Even the housewife would receive such script for her services in her home. Such a plan would bring about universal employment and prosperity, and in addition would eliminate bank failures, false investments, and artificial inflation of values and securities. A service unit is the only standard that could be made universal. That, that's it. That's a pretty good hmm. uh, theory by Spencer Lewis. Yeah. I, I think everyone should try to think of something. I, I tried to think of something with my limited ability to be able to think. 
I, was, I see everybody using credit cards today. I go to the store, and I've never seen so many people using their credit cards instead of using the money, cash. And I say to myself that, what if we had cards, but not banked like the, not the cards that we have today, banked by paper money, but banked, like as he was saying here, by service. Let's say, for instance, a doctor earns, um, let's, say he just, let's say he earns a thousand a week. Let's say he's given a card showing that he's a doctor, just like a credit card, with his name, a number, and maybe a picture of him. This credit, this card that he has, when he goes to the store, he, instead of it being paper, it's, it's, it's one thousand, one not one thousand dollars, but one thousand. Uh, uh, what did I say before? Units, units. huh? Units. One thousand units, credits rather, one thousand credits or units. Everything in the store, like if he goes to the store, he goes in and gets the things he needs. He goes and gets milk. Let's say milk is three credits. And he buys all, everything that's buy is in credits instead of like dollars. When he gets the thing, he goes to the cashier, he shows his card. Everything that's uh, uh, calculated up is calculated in credits, numbers. The numbers that are taken from the thousand credits that he earns a week is taken off of that credit. Whatever, whatever's left is left. What he, whatever he has left is, is, is from what he, oh my goodness. After all the things he's paid for, whatever's left is on his credit, what he has left. Whatever he doesn't use at the end of the week is eliminated. He can't save or anything. The next week he starts with a thousand credits again to get the things that he didn't get. The person who, say, is a transit worker like, like I was, I might get, say, 500 credits. But everything that I, every, all the credits that I get is... I always, I always can get the necessities of life. I am not left in need. Even the smallest person down to the smallest credits is always still able to get the things that, that he needs for existence. And nothing hindered that person from moving up. Like today, we have people who go into, into certain things just for the sake of the money, amount of money they make. Another person cannot move into another position because it's all crowded by those who are making this and they keep others back. I don't know how to explain it. I try to think, but whatever person can think up, use. You, there may be geniuses out there who can think something up that would benefit all mankind. Powers that be would try everything they can in their power to silence or kill or sure. those type of people because they, they don't want to lose what they have. They know it eventually it's going to change. It's sure. going to have to. Yeah. History has shown that. But the mistake I think we make, we keep repeating history. Yes, yeah. We keep going back to the uh, uh, monetary system that we've used in the past mm -hmm. instead of coming up with a new one that's completely different than the old one. Mm -hmm. Now, you were mentioning something about people who get into positions because of the money. Say, for example, I know someone who wanted to become a nurse because nurse, nurses make money. Mm -hmm. You get into the wrong things for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a part of the person that wants to help. But the main reason behind it is you have a career, you have money that you can make in the career. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, they're doing it for the wrong reason. Even mm -hmm. doctors. And... Now, I have a question uh, for you. I know you wanted to say something. Yeah, I remember one time I was reading something about uh, the amount of doctors that were being put out in, <laughs> from, the, from the schools. And it was limiting, it, limiting, I know some time back I read this somewhere, they were limiting the amount of doctors because... If too many doctors, if too many people became doctors, that would take away, like say for instance, I'm a doctor, and I'm working in a certain area. I count on my patients for the, the income that I'm making. If another doctor comes in an area, a certain distance away, which lightens the people's waiting list that they can go to another doctor, if they go to this other doctor, this doctor now loses a certain amount of income. And it shouldn't be like that. This doctor should be able to go out and, 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 and go into a practice and help eliminate the waiting period for people. People, you know, people have to wait a long time. To, to, just like just recently they're talking about the veterans. Veterans waiting for I don't know how long. And, 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 and now they, they're thinking about it's just it's, it's a sorry system. Private hands own the medical association, the education sector. 
the media, I mean, our government, the banks, privately sure. owned, private mm. sector. Yeah. And a lot of people would think that corporations run run the world. I don't, I don't believe that. It's it's the the central banks that run the world, because the corporations rely on the banks for money. Corporations are in business for what? Yeah, money. Man, profits, profits, profits. Whoever issues, whoever creates the money and issues the money, are the supreme controllers of the planet. Mm. I do agree to an extent that corporations have a big influence over our government. But the central banks are the ones who have control over the corporations and the government. Mm -hmm. The banks and the corporations do work and the oil companies work hand in hand because they all benefit each other and at the end of the day they're sharing, they're sharing the wealth. Mm -hmm. But the central banks are the, the, the what do you call the, the queen of the beehive. Mm -hmm. You want to get the you go after the queen, the main source. Mm -hmm. That's that's the central banks. Now I have a question for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Reading a Spencer Lewis mm -hmm. to us. Now some some of our viewers might question: mm -hmm. Is this uh this is socialism, right? Mm -hmm. He's he's proposing something that's a socialist idea. Mm -hmm. We're a democratic society. We we're supposed to have uh, rights to do what we want to do and mm -hmm. make as much money as we want to make. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? You know, I, 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 I have a home. I have a nice backyard. I worked as a, as a conductor. I didn't make that much, but I, I did pretty well. I'm satisfied. I'm, I don't want, I just want to be, uh, be able to pursue um, my talents, my abilities, and be able to contribute it for the benefit and, and, and enjoyment of mankind. I studied voice. I, 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 have, I sing. I play a trumpet. I joined a band. This is my life. This is what I want to do. I don't want riches. I don't want wealth. I just want the necessities of life, the comfort. Why do we have to have people who want billions and billions of dollars? That means if they have billions, somebody's not going to have enough. Um, I was thinking of something. I, was, I remember I, I, I was... A thought came to me one time about a person wanting to accomplish things to do do good for all mankind. I was thinking about a person who goes to school to be a doctor. He goes through school, he gets his education, and he all wants to be a doctor because he wants to help people. He comes out and he starts to practice. He finds out that after so many years he has so many patients and he's getting a certain amount of money that he can count on every year. With this income, he now says, well, I can get, I can, I can, and he's doing good. He wants to do good, and he's doing good. All of a sudden, he says, well, I, I have to get, I'd like to get a home now. I'd like to get married and raise a family. I'm making enough to be able to do these things. And he marries, gets a family. He goes into debt. He has a nice home. He has a car. He has children. He's sending his children to school and college and things like that. Now, he's in, he, has, he has bills to pay still. All of a sudden, somebody comes along who says, I have a cure for all diseases. And he says, you know, he comes, he says, well, gee, that's good. I'd like to see everybody well. That's what he, that's what he came a doctor for, pe pe to see people healthy and well. And this person shows him that, it's, it's what, that what he has is really true. And he says, oh, this is good. Then all of a sudden, he has to stop. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do? I got my house payment, my car payment, my student loans. My student loans. What am I going to do if this comes my out? We, I can't have this happen now. We don't have the found. Like I said, these things could come out, but we don't have the foundation set up for a person like that to not suffer. Who, who wants to do good, but now he has to think about it. I can't let this happen. I'm going to lose my job. I'm not going to make any money. What am I going to have? That's right. That makes him think, and all of a sudden turn. Not evil, but now he says he's got to look out for his family, and he's not going to let his family, you know, fall down and start whereby they can't eat properly and things. I mean, a monetary hope, system. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. I get, I get a little, little. <laughs> it's because of the monetary system. Yeah. It all comes back to the monetary system. Yeah. The money. Yeah, yeah. The money. That's it. They say your money will make people change. Oh yes. Things. Oh yes. 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 I mean, uh, when you're single, like I'm. Mm. 
you know, thinking some people mm. are single, they might not have, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, as many things. But when you're, you know, committed and you have a family, mm -hmm. you, you're you thinking for their well-being. Sure. So they're, they're trapped. Even the mm. news reporters who want to become journalists, mm -hmm. they want to get into it for the right reasons of, mm. of you know, doing what's right for the people. Yep. But once they get in, they get too far in where they, they see what, what what it really is all about. Mm. And they, have, they fall in line, just like everybody else. Mm. Same thing with the... Um, Politicians, people who want to become politicians. Sure. They come in there wanting to do the right thing, mm. have hopes. When they get in there, they realize this is what it is. Mm. And right. if you're not a part of it, you, mm. you ain't going to be a politician that long. Like our newspaper news reporters today, they're spraying all this stuff in the air, all these poisons and things that we're breathing in, and people are becoming sick because of it. Chemtrails. Chemtrails. But do you hear our news reporters saying anything about it? Our weather news reporters? I listen to them. Oh, we have a storm coming up. A tornado is going to be in Texas. Or, uh, uh, heavy rains here and so and so and so forth. All these things they will announce. But they're news reporters. They're supposed to report what's being sprayed in the air. Why aren't they talking about that? What's keeping them from saying anything about it? Look up in the sky. Look at all the stuff that they're spraying. And Aluminum, barium, barium, and all this stuff that... We have, it's not going to stay up there, it's coming down, and we are breathing it. And I want to add on that, that the chemicals that they're spraying, I mean, we'll do a separate episode on chemtrails and geoengineering, but just to touch on it just a little bit. They're spraying this stuff with our taxpayers' money. They're, in a sense, killing us. <laughs> we're killing, we're, they're using our taxpayers' <laughs> money to kill us. And or infect us with diseases and uh, <laughs> yes. and look who reaps on this. They're making the money of doing this. The the companies for the gas, the the private companies are making money from our government doing this. The people who get sick now, they, the mm. medical association is making money, and the pharmaceutical companies are making mm. money. I mean, it's it's a money making business. Yes. They've had the cure for cancer. Mm. They don't want to bring it out because the medical association would be uh, they would lose millions of billions of dollars so would the pharmaceutical companies the radiation treatments mm. the uh, chemo all of that stuff they would lose money it all mm. comes back to the monetary system it has to mm. be changed I remember when I was a conductor and when I come off the train I go into the crew room somebody had put up a picture on the wall in the crew room of the lungs one healthy and one diseased but from smoke, from a, a, a from smoking, and I was a smoker at the time. And I walked in there and looked at the picture, and saw what I was doing to myself, paying somebody at that to mess up my lungs. And I said, "Oh my goodness!" I took the picture down off the wall, took it home, and put it on my kitchen table. And I struggled, me and my wife. We struggled, but we stopped. The the guy who put it up on the wall when he came in one day, he said, "Who took my picture down?" And I said, I did. I said, I took it home, put it on the kitchen. He said, is it doing you any good? I said, yes. He said, well, okay. <laughs> but that's what we're doing. We're paying. I'm, I, I was, did not, didn't think like that. I'm paying for somebody to poison me. Ruin my lungs. And we, here's what we're doing in the air today. Yeah, making them rich. We're supposed to have a pure, a, a, what they call a pure uh, something act. A government, a, in our system. I forget what they call it. Some pure pure air act or something like that. But you hear them saying anything about this? No, they don't. And they're being paid by us to report that we the air is contaminated. And it is contaminated, but they're not saying a thing about it. It's a What's business. going on? It's a business. If they do that, they'll lose money. They don't want to do that. Jeez. They'll lose money in their stocks, their investments, their yeah. partners. They don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you uh, about back to what you were talking mm -hmm. about with Spencer Lewis. Uh, I don't think you answered the one. No, I didn't want to get off my thought. I, I'm getting, <laughs> go ahead, I'm sorry. Now, for the viewers who are watching, some might feel that what you read about Spencer Lewis mm -hmm. to us is that that's socialism. Mm -hmm. And uh, why can't someone have to make the money that they want to make? If I want to make, say, I'm someone who's mm -hmm. thinking you know, a certain way, mm -hmm. I don't want to be told what to do or... I want to be able to make as much money as possible, and if mm. somebody else doesn't want to do it, that's their problem. If they mm. if they don't work as hard as I work mm. to get the money, 
That's socialism, what you're... What I, I don't care what you call it. If it's doing what is right for the people, I don't care what you call it. Right is right. I don't give a care what you call it. Call it what you will. If it's doing good for the people, then that's what counts. Forget about this, what they talk about, socialism, capitalism. Do the thing that's right. You don't have to have any name for it. Just do it. Just be right. Do the things that's right for the people. Socialism, capitalism, communism, and all these things. They give these names and give little titles and, and put little things into them and make people not even want to look into any of them. Divide. Yes. Anything that's good, just the right thing. That's all people have to do, the right thing. And there was something in that thing that talked about that, too. And I just, the little booklet. Oh, this one? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and say something. I'll find it. Because somebody mentioned that, asked about that question. I feel that what Spencer Lewis is talking about has a lot of validity, and I think it could work in society. I really do. We have to start to change our way of thinking. And for a new system, it's going to happen. It's going to happen have to happen the way things are going now I think when we hit rock bottom people will be crying out for change what I what I say to the people we can't wait for that to happen let's get the ball rolling and know what it is we want we have to get these videos out to others email them and have the people start thinking because things are going to start going down really soon sure. you know our dollar could collapse any any moment. We're so far in debt. The value of the dollar has dropped so so bad. Any minute it could happen. It's just like a like a like a time bomb waiting to go off. But the news media is not going to talk about the collapse of the dollar because people are going to panic. They're going to pull out all their money in those stocks. Mm -hmm. You know that's they don't want that because again private interest. You know the news media the privately owned. So they're going to try to hide it as much as they can. Mm -hmm. And for that, you know, the people have to... Well, I'm going to do a video on what, how things need to be changed. What we have to do to change it. And uh, that's a video, you know, stay tuned for that. And mm -hmm. um, but I believe the idea proposed by Spencer Lewis, even though it's from 1965, I believe that it could work. We can't go back to a monetary system and we're going to change it to a system that we've previously used because if we previously used it that means it didn't, it didn't work which means we had to have changed it so if we go back doing something before we're going to end up it's going to end up being the same way as this monetary system is so if people who want to change it are just thinking about the here and now what's in it what's best for us now and not thinking about down the road our, our generations to come set up a system that will not go corrupt yeah. that will be good that way it won't have to be changed until, I believe, down the line where even where we become more intellectual and more spiritual and mm. where we won't even need a monetary system. That's right, right. I right. think, I mean, it won't, I don't think that's going to be something that's going to be easy. And I mean, everything we're proposing with Spencer Lewis and the change in the monetary system, it's not easy. By no means, I would not kid you by saying it's something that can easily be done. You're going to have people who are in denial, who are going to reject it. And of course, you're going to have the powers that be that's going to want to fight us and do anything possible to keep what they have. So, if the more people that know about a change or have an idea of change, get it out to people. Throw ideas around till we find the right solution. And... We can't go into changing or changing our government and monetary system if we're not all, all, all on the same page. Because if we have one group that's thinking something else and another group that wants a different idea, it's going to end up being a conflict where it would be a civil war. And when that happens, the powers that be, the ones we removed, will sleep, you know, sneak right back in and put back the old system. Because the people say, well, things were not like this with the old system. Let's go back to that system. We, we all have to be on, on the same page. But I'm going to do a video about how that change is going to come about. What we need to do exactly, step by step. In a simple process of how to do it. I mean, it's not easy. But the process of how I will, you know, lay it out to you guys. So you guys can get an idea of the steps mm -hmm. that are involved to change. But go ahead, yeah. This was um, also asked of uh, this fellow who 
had met the Georgia Dam scheme, the question and answers. A question was put, do they not have what we call a socialistic type of life? The answer was, I do not know what the word socialism is supposed to represent. The word social means to be congenial and respect your fellow being. Jesus taught equality made up of many talents and the space people lived this cosmic law instead of the isms that we proclaim. They do not have a name for it. Like I said, name just people just do the right thing. Set up a system where everybody is treated equally. Everything is balanced and working in harmony with what we call universal law. Because if it's not working with universal law, it's not going to work. And this is what we don't know yet. This is what should be taught in all the schools and in every building that we call religious buildings. Universal law. It's, it's a universal thing. It's not something that's separate. Something we should all be studying. I've been studying it for a long period of time. And it's marvelous. And I wish I knew more. Well, with that said, uh, with the way things are going now, if we don't make change, come up with ideas, it doesn't have to be Spencer Lewis's no, theory. No, right. If someone has something better than that, sure. you know, we're going to also, uh, on our next episode, talk about another idea of a new monetary system by another man. His, his theory. And then uh, following that episode, I'll talk about what needs to be done to be changed. If we don't take action soon... And I feel our brothers and sisters are extraterrestrial brothers and sisters. They might have to come down and help us, you know, go in the right direction. Because we're not seeing straight right now. I mean, some of us, like me and Bernard, are. Mm. Most of the people mm. aren't. But it might take that to uh, bring change. Because they've, they've come down to help us before. You know, if you're new into the subject, you know, look into the Anunnaki mm. in Samaria with the UFOs and the Dogen tribes. and. Yeah. They've come throughout history to help us many, many times. The Hopi Indians, the Hopi Indians. Navajos, they all mention these people. Yeah. Even the, um, what do they call it? The Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls even mention it. Yeah. Well, we're going to wrap up this episode now. Mm -hmm. Any last words? No, just use your ability to be able to think and reason. Don't let these people... The powers that be uh, keep you from thinking like you're supposed to. And those who always say, oh, uh, and I've heard this many times from friends, co-workers, people on the street. Oh, the monetary system will never change. The monetary system is not mm. the problem. Mm. There's, a de there's denial because people, and I can, I can understand why. This is the only system they've ever known. Mm. People are afraid of change. Yeah, afraid of change. And uh, they're afraid to see if the grass is greener on the other side. I mean, it has to be better than what we're going through now. Oh, yes. yes. With this class system and sure. 3% of yeah. the 2 1 percent at the top making more money than the 90-some percent. It's ridiculous. Hmm. But for those that tell me that the monetary system will never be changed in my lifetime or in our lifetime, why? 